Can we talk about okay. Winget yeah. now? Sure. All yeah. right. So the original the original source for this here. Okay, perfect. I can display share. The original source for this here one is Wolframatic Alpha over on the forum, and the summary is. Microsoft has released its first stable version of a package manager called Winget. Now, package managers are no new thing and not even a new thing to Windows users, which I actually learned, so that was new to me. I had never heard of Chocolatey. Yes. Uh, but an official Microsoft package manager, like akin to what you have on Linux, for example, is pretty freaking new. So Winget has multiple commands, including install, search, uninstall, and upgrade, and is the second Microsoft-provided way to install software. This raises some real questions about the future of the Windows Store, since yeah. it completely bypasses it. So Luke, uh, as, okay. I, sorry, keep going. as the better versed in Linux between the two of us, why don't you answer for me the question that Da, 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 here it is. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where is it? Ah, yes. JTalk4456 asked, okay, for a Windows junkie like myself, can you please explain the concept of a package manager? Honestly, this sounds more complicated than just installing a program to me. Why do I want to go into the command line interface just to install something? You probably don't. Okay, well, that's a good beginning to the answer, but also, why does anyone care about this? Tell me. Uh, it's it's nice for really advanced users because you can do things in batches. You can verify the source that it's coming from really easily. Yep. Um, I especially like it when you're working on a multitude of computers uh, because you can parallelize things. You can script one thing to run it on a bunch of different uh, uh, devices or computers at once. Um, it's It's... It's nice for a lot of the same reasons that almost anything in command line is nice for, and it's just as not great as a lot of things that you do command line with are are just as not great for. Like if if you've never heard of this and you're really not into that type of thing and you don't spend any time in command line, etc., this probably isn't for you, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, and this, I also don't think this is going to completely supersede the Windows Store for the exact same reason. Um, it, it, it will supersede the Windows Store in certain ways, which I think is fantastic because the Windows Store is junk. It's so bad. Um, it's so amazing it's be, how bad it is. It's terrible. Like so just, it's going to be really, really nice that you yeah. can just not use it, especially if you're a power user. Um, and that's, that's great. Um, a big benefit. Oh, yeah. go ahead. There, there, there's some really nice things about this. It's going to make life easier for some people. It's especially going to make life easier for setting up new systems um creating custom isos was like this really big thing it's gonna be a lot easier and you can run just run like a batch and have this just do everything for you um but for the average user i think this will change nothing which is completely fine to be very clear um but yeah so i was saying okay. before the show one one more thing i can add i was saying before yeah. the show this is an extremely non balmers microsoft move because this does create a workaround for a piece of software that Microsoft already has, which is something that would have never flown back then. Uh, this feels much more like a modern Microsoft move, and I like it. It's going to make life notably easier for certain people. Um, it just isn't going to do much for most people, which is completely fine. Yeah. Okay, well, I actually updated Windows right before the show. I don't seem to have it unless there's a oh no you have to install it it's included in the preview version of windows though i think i'm in the preview version gain early access submit your request to the blah 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 participant oh, okay well whatever i don't uh, i apparently do not have it yet i just checked i wanted to do kind of a quick demo of how something like this can actually save time compared to a more traditional way of installing on windows yeah. so you might think oh well gee why would i want to go into uh you know command line in order to install a program well the reason is that it could actually be a lot faster. If all you have to do is click the Windows icon or press your Windows button, type CMD, that puts you in the command prompt, and then go just winget install Firefox. And then the, the whole thing just happens. No next, but the directory, blah, 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 blah. Just none of that. It just 
installs Firefox, that that is that is that is actually potentially faster, assuming that you don't like hunt and so, peck type on your keyboard. I, I will agree with that. I will also bring up uh, the, the Sam in Floatplane Chat said, "Don't forget, it'll make upgrades or sorry, updates much easier for apps." Um, to you, Linus, and to him, I say not necessarily. My only reason for that is for you, this is probably true. For the vast, I'd say probably over 90% of Windows users, that's not true because it's just not easier. They're just not going to do that because anytime you have to open command line, they're just going to freak out. <laughs> um, that's fair. So, yeah, I, I would again go back to like this. It, this is not going to be a thing at all for the vast majority of Windows users. That doesn't mean it's not cool. It's really cool. I'm stoked. It's great. Awesome. But yeah. Uh, we've got some people. T Clark says Winget it's just downloads installers and uninstallers. That doesn't sound right. I'm definitely going to have to try it. So I consider this, you know, I don't have it. It's, uh, it comes from ignorance, but it sounds definitely better than using the Windows store or the Microsoft store because I don't think anything could actually be worse than that. It's kind of amazing to me that the same company that makes, you know, the Xbox marketplace on Xbox. I mean, look, looking at the 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 docs.microsoft.com article on Winget, it doesn't look like it's just downloading the installer. It literally says it's installing things. Okay, perfect. Um, so, I, I mean, I haven't used it. Linus hasn't used it. Um, Take this for what it is. But, yeah. In other Windows news, we've got Windows 10 2 coming. There's going to be a next generation Windows oh arriving in fall 2021, and it was teased at the Build 2021 developer conference. Uh, here's the quote uh, from Satya Nadella. Soon we will share one of the most significant updates of Windows of the past decade to unlock greater economic opportunity for developers and creators. Developers, developers, de okay, sorry. Uh, codename Sun Valley 21H2. You can expect more details in June at the next event. So. They've said in the past that Windows 10 would be the last version of Windows, so it's likely that this is just another Windows 10 update. But the whole next generation thing could imply that this is a very major update. Um, and, and also, we, I mean, we said this was going to happen super long time ago. You can't just completely stop uh, a major innovation. Like it's going to happen. They might just stop numbering the operating system, but there's going to yes. be big. Big chunks. Which could be exactly what we're looking at. So preview builds have already showcased some of the coming changes. So WinUI 3 integration, a new start menu, new action center, new taskbar, rounded corners. I mean, that sounds like enough to justify a new version of Windows back in the day when they released them every couple of years. Honestly, um, man, I would take rounded corners this time. I'm so tired of everything being a box. I never liked this design language. I always think it looked like junk. I, at no point in time did I think it looked good. I The, the first, like... Windows 8 uh, menu thing that you had. There was no start menu. Do you remember that? I don't even remember what that was called. Windows 8 tiles or whatever. Hated it. Hate yep. it now. You know what still looks Get good out of my today? <laughs> Windows <What>? Vista. Yeah. <laughs> I it mean... does. As much as people hated that operating system and with decently good reason if you didn't have an absolutely monster machine. I did. It looked good. Get wrecked. And these, this square thing... <laughs> I didn't. Um, the, these <laughs> these square things. I just uh, it's Man, just it's and like so in some places maybe you could make it look good, but when that's like this is how every single thing is gonna look forever, no matter what. It just I don't know. I actually hate it so much. I don't usually get that like yeah. I was gonna say <laughs> passionate about design things, but I just hate this. Everything being so, flat so, and so square. Much. It's just not good. Flat squares everywhere. Oh, this is a fun one. So your flat squares might be a little bit easier to keep track of. Um, the fix for Windows apps rearranging themselves could be part of this update. Uh, I have so many issues with this. Like, oh man, do you ever open a dock in protected view mode? And you go to like, you put it where you want to have it. And oh, and then you, then like, you, click, like, you go yeah, to make a change. <laughs> You click, yes, I want to edit this document. It's from a safe location or whatever. And it goes, and it just like moves it somewhere else. It's like, no, I put it where I wanted it to be. I wouldn't have moved it if I didn't want it there. Um, so I think annoying. it's not quite that issue, but it's actually more related to users with multiple monitors. This is one of those issues with Windows that just shouldn't be an issue. 
Like if you unplug a monitor and an application just gets like stuck off of your screen and there's no way to recall it without, I think there are third party tools where you can like build something into um, like the context menu to right click it in the taskbar and like bring it to display one or bring it to display two or whatever. But it is so annoying and not just when you unplug and replug a monitor, but also if you're remoting into a machine uh, with software that doesn't have support for multi-monitor, like say for example, I think the Parsec non-professional version doesn't. Um, but yeah, so apparently there's a fix coming for that. Just hilarious.